everybody, welcome to Edifedia World 9th grade computer applications video lecture series. I'm Upeka Wendibona and today we are going to look at elements of graphical user interfaces. So here is my Windows 7 operating system graphical user interface. We call this interface the desktop. When you log into the system, desktop is the first thing we see. Computer desktop has the same meaning, same concept as in physical tabletop desktop. You can personalize this computer desktop as you prefer and as you arrange your physical desktop. You can keep a messy and action looking boyish theme or else clean and clear girlish theme. So to personalize this desktop, Right click on this blank area and click on the last item personalize from the option menu appears. So from here you can provide a theme for your system. It will affect your desktop background, window color, sounds and screen saver all at once. In Windows 7 it has something called error themes. Main look and feel quality of our theme is it provides transparency. By from that, it enhances the smooth feeling of the eye. For example, the notepad window I opened in here has round corners and a transparent border which gives it a catchy look. Under the air theme section, it has few eye-catchy themes. Windows 7, architecture, characters, landscapes, nature and scenes. The layers you see in here in these themes means it changes the desktop wallpaper time to time automatically. Like a slideshow, not fixed into a one desktop image. Greater effect can be obtained from your themes when you have a good graphic card. If your graphic card cannot afford your themes, you should go for basic and high contrast themes. Windows 7 Basic still have that rounded corner look but without transparency. Other themes in that section doesn't have that round corner look. From desktop background you can select your own wallpaper or wallpapers with a slideshow by defining a transition time. From window color, we can change the color of each component of a window when you use a basic and high contrast theme. If you use a error theme, you can change color as a theme. Another important thing I want to show you is variety of mouse pointers you can have. You should know which mouse pointer icon represent which action. Let's look at that. Normally, mouse pointer show you as a simple arrow icon. When there is a process going on, the icon change into an animation with rotating circular round. When you want to type a text or select a text, the mouse pointer turn into an icon of letter I. When you move your mouse pointer into the border of the window, mouse pointer will change into either one of these icons. For vertical resize, horizontal resize or diagonal resizes, the mouse pointer will change. When the mouse pointer change into either one of these icons, it means that you can perform those actions. When you move your mouse pointer over to a link and when it change into a hand icon, that means you can click it. So those are the most occasionally used mouse pointer icons represent each actions. Okay, now we had arrange our system GUI as we wanted. Next thing is to prepare our computer desktop. You know, some people prefer to keep things nearby when they more oftenly use them. So likewise, if you more oftenly access something, you can keep it nearby rather than clicking and going a long road. We call them as shortcuts. So the icons you see in here with a small arrow are called shortcuts. This text file is not a shortcut, it's a file saved in the desktop. But this one is a shortcut because it has a small arrow. The icon is linked into a file located in somewhere in the hard drive. If you right click on this shortcut, you can open the file location. Now what I want to look is its properties. 
So here you can see it has a tab called shortcut. You do not get this kind of a tab for a file. Let me show you in this text file. No shortcut tab. So in this shortcut tab it mentions the target type. So here it's an application. Almost all of the applications give you a chance to create a shortcut at the desktop at the installation process. By double clicking the shortcut icon at the desktop, you can easily launch the application. We can discuss about the installation process at the next lecture. The other labels in here are useful when you create a shortcut for a file. We'll look into that matter now. So here I have a text file that I'm working on these days. This file is located in a place that need to be navigated so far. As it is so hectic work to click here and there, I can easily create a shortcut at the desktop. Right click in the file. If you click create shortcut menu item, the shortcut would be created right here. But what I wanted is a shortcut in the desktop. So click the send to menu item and click the desktop. So in the desktop here is my shortcut. When I double click it, I can easily open the text file. Remember, this is not the file or either a copy of the file. It is just only a link to our file. Therefore, it would not take any file size capacity. Okay, now we know all about shortcuts. Let's learn about components of our taskbar. By default, taskbar placed at the bottom of the desktop. But if you like, you can place it at the left side, right side or at the top side. Just simply drag it over to the side you like. But I prefer placing at the bottom. The taskbar starts with the start button. When you click start button, it will open up the start menu. You can pin the shortcuts you have created to the start menu. And also you can pin the shortcuts to the taskbar too. So here are the pinned shortcuts in the taskbar. Also it displays the running applications. The highlighted ones are the applications that are running now. At the end of the taskbar it displays the notification area with the notification icons. The applications presented by these notification icons needed to provide notifications in regular basis. And that's why it has a separate area. You can customize what icons need to be displayed in here. The next item in the taskbar is the date and time. When you click the date and time area, it will open up a calendar and a clock. At the corner end of the taskbar, it has a button. When there are a lot of applications showing in the desktop, by simply clicking this button, you can view the desktop and all the applications will be minimized. So that's all about taskbar. The next thing we want to learn is properties of a window. Most of the applications open in a window. So let's take a notepad. It's open in a window. We can keep multiple windows at the same time at the desktop. So let's look at each of the component. The top part of the window which mentions the file name and the application name called as title bar. At the end of the title bar it has three components. Minimize button will minimize the window to the taskbar. Maximize button will enlarge the window to cover up the whole desktop. When the window is maximized, the button will convert it into another button as restore down. So when you click the restore down button, the window will turn back to the original size. Close button will close the window. If there is anything to be saved, it will prompt you. The second bar we call as menu bar because it contains menus. To create a new one, to open a file, to save the file or save as a file and all the things regarding printing. At the end of the file menu it has exit button to close the window. 
So likewise, in the menu bar, there are several menus. Edit menu, format menu, view menu and help menu. Other applications may have additional menus than this. Almost all of the applications start with the file menu and end with the help menu. And the help menu will contain a help file as well as the information about the application. That's about the menu bar. The next item is the application body. So it might have a vertical scroll bar as well as a horizontal scroll bar. At the bottom of the window it contains a status bar. Status bar is useful when you need to display information about the current action. So here it displays the position, the line number and the column number of the cursor. So these are the basic components of a window. Some applications might have these properties, some applications may not. The next thing we're going to learn is difference between files and folders. These are called files and these are called folders. You should create files under folders. Folders can be created under folders too. All these files and folders are in the elements of GUI folder. So to create a new folder under elements of GUI, you can simply click this new folder button. Or else you can right click here and select the new menu item and select the folder menu item. To rename, select the file or folder and click on the name of the file or folder. Then you will be able to type the name. Or else you can right click on the file or folder and select the menu item rename. To delete the file, right click on the file or folder and select the menu item delete. So in this message, it asks from you whether you want to move the file to the recycle bin. Recycle bin is actually another folder that you can put garbage data. Same concept as in the physical recycle bin. So whenever you want, you can restore back the file to the original place from the recycle bin. If you want to delete a file permanently, you need to press shift delete button. So with this method, file or folder cannot be restored back. It's deleted permanently forever. The next thing I want to show you is the file or folder properties. Right click on the file or folder and select the menu item properties. In the attributes section, there are two checkboxes, read only and hidden. So I'm going to check this read only checkbox. So this means the file cannot be modified. It is only for reading purposes. So if you want to modify, you have to save it as another file. Let me show you unchecking the read only option. You see now you can save the modification in the same file. Ok, now let's check the hidden attribute. By checking this attribute, you can hide the file.
if you see the PowerPoint icon that I had hidden, it becomes transparent. So this indicates the file is hidden. If you go to Tools menu and select the Folder Options menu item and go to View tab and tick the Don't Show Hidden Files Folders or Drives label, you will see the file we have hidden has gone. But actually it's not gone anywhere, it's still in this place. If you tick the Show Hidden Files Folders and Drives label, you can get it back. So we've done all the elements that we can find on a graphical user interface. Let's summarize what we have done today. As the first item, we looked at how to personalize the desktop, how to use a theme for an eye-catchy look. And then we looked at how to create shortcuts where you can easily launch an application or open a file without navigating so far away. Then we looked at components of a taskbar and how each component support for a user. And then we showed you what are the components contained in a window. In the top of the window, middle in the window, bottom of the window. Then we showed you how to create files and folders, how to rename them and how to delete them. And the last, we showed you two attributes in file properties, read-only attribute and hidden attribute. Almost all of the operating systems support these graphical user interface elements. So this is all for today. In the next lecture, we will look at how to install and uninstall a software. That would be our final lecture in this section, Operating Systems. So, thank you for watching. See you in the next lecture. This video brought to you by edupediaworld.com. Watch more from our website.